of the, when I give moon talks, I suppose every fourth one, somebody sallies up to me and they say, that was a good talk. That I saw something on YouTube. I saw a thing on YouTube. Now, a thing on YouTube, when I hear that, my hair stands on end. But YouTube has become the object of learning for a great many people who are uneducated. And so that is something I initially I got, I want to say, profoundly irritated. Now I don't. I simply say, why do you feel that way? And then they go, I don't know. I just saw this thing I do to. You know, so there's no academic backing in what they're saying. And so my talk today, I've given you a little introduction on myself, and I'm going to show you some of the things that um, the naysayers talk about. Many of them are which, but many of them of which are just totally ignorant. And then give you some proof that we did go to the moon. And, uh, and then if we have time, we should have time, because I'll, I'll move along kind of quickly through this. Uh, I will entertain questions and answers. So, this is the title that I chose, From the Soundstage to Tranquility. So, for those who say, oh yeah, that was done on a soundstage in Hollywood. And, uh, so, and then I've chosen the subtitle, The Voyage from Ignorance to arrogance, because these people don't know anything, and not only do they not know, they're arrogant about what they don't know when they talk to you. So, I just saw a thing on YouTube. Um, I've been very fortunate throughout my lunar career to meet many wonderful people, and this is a true prize. This is a signature from Neil Armstrong. And I met him in, in Washington, D.C. shortly after I uh, got out of grad school. So that, that is the treasure, and I have a copy of it over here. Then in 93, I had another just thing that I, 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 I'm still thrilled with this. This is an art gallery in Monterey, and this is Alexei Leonov on the right, on, on, on your left, me, and Alan Shepard. So Alexei Leonov was the first Soviet to spacewalk, and he is a painter and came to an art gallery, and uh, they called up Alan Shepard, who in those days lived in, in uh, Carmel, and they said, you want to come down and see Alexei Leonov, and so he came down, and I stood there, and I, I practically had saliva. <laughs> <laughs> and his, Alan Shepard's wife was standing there, and she said, no, he put his hand on my shoulder, and he said, would you like a picture with us? And I said, eh. <laughs> <laughs> So anyway, so there I am, uh, among those two giants, both who have passed on. Um, I've met the Apollo 13 people. They seem to be more famous because of the movie. And uh, that's the, uh, the crippled craft. So, um, and then my telescope, uh, <laughs> which I love dearly. So. And then these are the kind of drawings that I do. And, uh, that this shows what a typical crater under a certain lighting position looks like. And uh, the, the sun in this case is coming in in this direction. And so there are, there's a rim which is in shadow and this other rim is lit. And uh, there are many little structures and these are what change within, within 15 minutes. May I have a drink of water, somebody, a sprinter? So those change within 15 minutes. So my, my drawings are annotated with 
the parameters that I need to go back years later and look at this. And I like to think that these things may conceivably, thank you, be of interest to uh, NASA in the future. Well, in the future is coming up in about four years when we go back to the moon. Because these objects, even though we know all the geography of the moon, it's possible that some of those little mountains, which are huge, protruding from there, uh, may not appear as such on photos. So I like to think maybe something will happen there. Uh, my favorite person who uh, went to the moon is Neil, uh, is uh, Buzz, Buzz Aldrin. And he's a, just a wonderful person. I met him about four times once when I was teaching and I took my class up to a Super Bowl in San Diego and was talking to him and he said, let me, let me finish here. Just go over and sit over there, that woman in the green, she's my wife, and just wait over there and uh, we'll talk. So, you know, so I have all these things signed in, in, um, and one of the one of the things that all the astronauts wore was this Speedmaster watch. And they started advertising, or they did, for the uh, uh, 50th anniversary. So some years ago, long years ago, I went out and bought one. <laughs> so, and I, I did all kinds of research and asked them specifically, did you really wear a Speedmaster? And they said, absolutely, yeah. So I've got that. And then uh, when I met him once uh, at a NASA function at Moffett Field, uh, it, it took me about 20 years to uh, find this suit that I'm wearing. And I finally found where it was made and I bought, the, I made this uh, badge and the badge is was what was on the uh, uh, recovery ship uh, up in the Bay Area, and uh, I, I had him sign the back of this, so I've got that. So that's my fanaticism about that. And he's, I said, would you hold my watch? <laughs> <laughs> so that's him holding this watch. So uh, uh, let me move on then to the theories of how we didn't go to the moon, and. Uh, this is a vast, from a particular person, collection of individuals uh, who have all kinds of theories about why we didn't go to the moon, and I won't bother going into those. But <laughs> when you go on YouTube, there's hundreds and hundreds of these sites, and this is a typical person telling you we didn't go to the moon. <laughs> And uh, he, he starts out by saying, please subscribe, hit the subscribe button. And he says, today we're going to be, oh, and it, usually he starts, guys, guys, today we're going to be talking about why we didn't go to the moon. Please hit subscribe. And I mention that because later I'm going to make reference to that. So, humans love conspiracies. And... Uh, I don't know, these, these are some of them, like the chemtrails, if you remember, uh, that they were biological things and the government was doing that. And then there was something some long years ago that the UN was going to take over our nation flying in black helicopters. And then, of course, extraterrestrials and UFOs are just all over the place. And then there have been throughout history various false flag operations, uh, the Oklahoma City bombing and the Gulf of Tonkin and so forth. And I think the most offensive one is this Sandy Hook school. Yep. That this was manufactured by the gun lobby promoting gun control. That, that is, I, I almost can't talk about that, it's so terrible. And former Ku Klux Klan leader David Duke, if you remember him, theorized that science were responsible for that shooting. And then, of course, Barack Obama not being born in the States and fluoridation and the flat earth. And it just goes on and on and on. So the moon conspiracy is part of a proud collection of these <laughs> silly things. Uh, 
Now, here are some of the things they say. And if you just let that sink in, I mean, you think, huh? <laughs> we couldn't have gone because the moon is not visible several days a month. <laughs> Where's the go? Go at night and sneak up on it. Oh, yeah, go at night and sneak up on it. They didn't have the science for us to go to the moon in 1969. Really? Russia was first in space and we needed the prestige of going to the moon, so we just faked it. And then this I love. Stanley Kubrick, 2001, A Space Odyssey, was hired by the government to fake the landing on a sound stage, and then he was killed by the government. He died of a heart attack when he was asleep. But the government killed him so that he wouldn't talk. Yeah. Stanley Kubrick. Uh, and then others, being more positive with him, said uh, that he, he, he loved excellence and perfection, so he had uh, the lunar landing shot on sight. <laughs> <laughs> the timer's gone dead. Oh, okay. Uh, and then I love this. If, if, we went, if we didn't go to the moon, how come we didn't go six times? <laughs> okay. Okay, um, and, and then they will say with, with complete authority, um, um, Uh, six, yeah, six moon landings. Oh, and then they'll, they'll add something like, seems that we, we went six times between 69 and 72 and then since. Doesn't that seem a little... <laughs> okay. They don't know anything about the Congress being involved in the funding. So, um, the other thing that they talk about is, all the time, is how the astronauts are all lit up in their shadows in the famous picture of uh, Buzz Aldrin that I'll, I'll show you. You know, he's fully illuminated on the front. Well, the moon's reflectivity is near 100%. So, there's no shadows on the moon as such. It's just a, you know, it's kind of like walking outside in the, in the noon sunshine from being in here and, you know, it, everything is lit up all over the place. So that's something they don't think about. Uh, they, they, they talk about the stars not being visible in the lunar sky <laughs> as, as part of the effort that, it's, that, that it was done in the studio. Well, the moon is so bright that a, a camera, if you remember the old f-stops on cameras, when you close it down to be able to photograph on the surface, the stars go dark, and uh, that happens in a number of pictures, um, uh, that, that, which I'll show you later on. So, uh, so the proof we went, and it's basically centered around the magnitude of everything that was done. There were 300, 377 contractors. Now imagine. If all that was fake, every one of those people were all bamboozled. And many of the people, like if I made this object to go on Apollo, when the astronauts were going, I was on call. Because I needed to be able to be reached, if something happens to this, to tell NASA, okay, do this. And of course, that's what they did with uh, Apollo 13. <laughs> So, 377,000 contractors. Now, pictures were taken, about 32,000, and there are 45 Hasselblad magazines that were taken, those marvelous cameras, the digital things, can't begin to hold a candle to that in my mind. But these, one of the things, and I'll show you a picture of that, is what's called parallax. So, as I'm standing here, and the astronauts had their Hasselblad uh, on their chest. 
and they moved forward. They didn't have a viewfinder because they, you know, with a helmet they couldn't uh, use a viewfinder. So they walked forward, click, click, click. Now what's happening, this is getting closer, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Each successive picture, click, click. Now, now I'm over here photographing this, and this is gone, and that's gone. So, to process in a pre-Photoshop environment a potential 32,000 pictures for parallax, you know, you'd have to take each one of those pictures and paint out that table and make sure it can No! No, no, no. Um, all the conversations between the astronauts and the ground are available. I have some resources up here and I ask you to take one of these. Uh, all of those are on the NASA site. The NASA site is just an, un it's got all the pictures of all the missions all the conversations and I have some resources here for you to look at on YouTube they're not the we never went to the moon thing but those are all there for you to see uh, there was a piece of equipment surveyor 3 which went to the moon in 67 and then was brought back to earth by Apollo 12 so one of the Apollo 12 astronauts walked up to that that had been there for a couple of years and removed a piece to get a picture of it in the lunar environment. Uh, and then uh, the uh, uh, Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter, and I'll show you some pictures here, is a machine that went around the, the moon. It's still going around taking pictures. And you can see all the sites, the footprints, that's what's just amazing, and I'll, I'll show you a picture of that. So China uh, has gone to, the, these are some, some of the other countries' efforts. China has gone and, and currently in, in the approach shown the uh, uh, Apollo landing sites. And then during the uh, Apollo mission itself, uh, there was uh, Australia's Honeysuckle Creek tracking station, which was working in real time to relay these images. So again, what you keep in mind is all of the fakeness. If we never went, this was all BS. You know, we'd have to, all the Australians would have to be tricked. And uh, at the Naval Postgraduate School before 9-11, when I used to go over there in Camp Sins because I'm a bomb-throwing commie and can't go into that facility anymore. Uh, that there are, on, on, on the second floor, thousands of research books with all manner of institutions and people who have studied the moon rocks or the fuel or the electrical. All, all of those things are there. And again, in the idea that we never went, all those things would have to be fake. And then Lick Observatory, this is kind of cool, uh, which is just on the way here. When Neil was on the moon, he was moving a mirror, and they were talk he was talking live to Lick Observatory, and they were sighting a laser to measure the distance of the moon to the Earth. And so he was saying, here, no, no, they say, no, no, move back a little more, angle it up this way. There, okay. And he said, okay, is this where you want it? And then he blocked it there, and that's still there, and we're still using it. So there's the famous picture, and it's all lit up in the front, and there's the Hasselblad camera uh, that they made for Apollo, stripped of most of its, uh, you know, regular features. So here is what I was talking about, uh, the uh, parallax. Okay, here's walking up, and then that crater disappears, and then another one appears. So, all of those things are happening sequentially. And there's, uh, this is the uh, Apollo 11, Apollo 17 landing site. And so you can see there is the entire ascent stage and then all the footprints and the other equipment. So 
I mean, it's just, just absolutely amazing what we're able to do. And then the conspirators talk, too, about the flag. How come the flag is waving? Waving? What are you talking about? The flag was a dime store flag. That just amazes me that they bought, and it was on a metal thing. And when they were trying to shove it into the lunar soil, it was kind of doing this, and then people have interpreted that that's a... That's because that was done in a studio and there was no, no, no vacuum there. And then this is um, a Neil Armstrong uh, looking at the flag and then there were a series of pictures that were taken. There he's turned his head more this way. So this is another picture and the flag remains exactly the same. And then the questions that are on these sites are, are just so simplistic. I mean, I suppose I'm coming across as arrogant because of my age and my interest in this. But Did Neil Armstrong's land, you think Neil Armstrong's real or fake? Did NASA take their landing? What's missing in the... Get out of here! You know, I, I just don't want to... <laughs> so, here's a picture of the International Space Station and there are no stars because the Earth is so bright. And a picture taken, you kind of have to be technical to know this. This is the stars surrounding the Earth from Apollo 16. So these are of a clear configuration. And this is a photograph. It, 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 it really, regrettably, looks kind of otherwise. But those stars or what would be behind the earth at the moment that that was taken. And the sound on uh, the, all of the communications of Apollo is on, uh, on that same site that I list on that handout. And here's a clip, and these are all the conversations. You know, and you can just listen to them. There they are. And this is the uh, Apollo 12. Uh, I, uh, that's Alan Shepard, as I recall. He's picking up a piece of the surveyor and going to take it back to the lunar module. So, again, the, the Internet is just kind of incredible. I mean, when you search something, you know, and it says 750,000 results, what is that? You know, you know, you look at page one and page two, and then who's going to look at the rest? Well, this is presented by James, whoever he is, as some authority that Neil Armstrong moon UFO yields 20,000 results, or Aldrin moon 15,000, or Apollo 11 UFO. So the implication here is the massive number of UFOs, and then that, there's some kind of validity in that. Mm -hmm. You know, and I've heard people say, well, you know, you say we went to the moon, well that's a thing, just a theory. And we have <laughs> another group of people who say it's a, it, that we didn't go. So let's study that. You know, let's look at it and see, because obviously there can't be one real answer. Now, these pictures that I'm ending here are just kind of interesting. Here, this was when Neil Armstrong died, and it says, first man on whom dies along with secrets of what, and then there's some terrible something or other. Well, this here, tranquility, was flat. That's why we went there, because it was flat and there were no mountains. And there, there's a UFO, and, you know, the whole thing is just so ludicrous that it defies description. Uh, my idea is that this is all because of clicks and money and so forth. And this is supposedly, again, if you can believe it, how much people make when this is the top people. And I don't know what they, I don't know what Dude Perfect, <laughs> Dan, TDM, but apparently they make that amount of money on YouTube <clears throat> by uh, having these massive amounts of clicks. And then other things on YouTube or on the internet, I mean, look at that drawing of the moon, but it says Apollo, what, what did NASA really, you know?
now, and then they've got uh, extraterrestrial bases on the moon. I mean, okay, it's just so boring. And now this picture here, it says he stated a huge ball of light. This is Neil Armstrong in the foreground. Now, there's another one of some <laughs> alleged person. And this is simply a drawing, a, 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 a photograph of what I do the drawings with. And then here's a UFO watching Apollo. And here's Buzz Aldrin confirmed seeing a UFO. Ah, and there's the UFO. Well, let me show you the real picture. <coughs> So this is the real picture, and I'll leave this here for you to see. This is Apollo 16 signed by uh, the Apollo 16 <coughs> astronaut. Now, up here, there's this circle. That circle is a reflection. Nothing more and nothing less. So there's the picture, and uh, it's got that reflection on which some find somebody has interpreted as being a UFO. And it was once, it, it was an astronomy picture of the day in 97, which if you know, that's a very, very respectable website. And uh, even the sun doesn't escape. Here's a missing chunk of the sun and ominous dark craft. So here are my theories of the moon conspirators. They're taking advantage of the gullible uninformed for self-promotion. They're uninformed themselves. Now, when somebody says Sandy Hook mm. was faked, you want to grab them by the neck and say, what's making you say that? I, I don't know, either they're nuts or they're trying to increase subscription because then you're going to go and say, hey, my God, I can't say that those children were nuts, nobody died. Okay, so uh, they're increasing clicks on YouTube or they're increasing book sales or speaker fees. And there's a couple of speakers that are doing a talking circuit uh, that I have spoken to and don't want to get into here. But, but it's just amazing what's out there if you go to some of the UFO conferences. So here's the Earth and Mirror in uh, June 95. And again, no... Uh, stars in the sky. And this is the picture of the century, and this was a, a very famous picture of the crater of Copernicus. And uh, uh, at, at this particular site that I went to, somebody had blown that out and painted stuff on it and had like mining equipment. <laughs> so there's a Apollo 11 spaceship, there were fragments of a huge UFO. One of the most beautiful pictures there. So we have time for a couple questions for Craig. If you want to come up to the microphone, oh, somebody turn on the lights. Any, any questions? Yeah, let me get the... How do I turn the starting uh, one? Is that on? No, it's on. Oh, it's on? Okay, so if, it, if you have a question, too, come on up to the microphone. Excellent.